So I wanted to talk about another topic, one that I have never really talked about before and honestly paid relatively little attention to. And until I needed it, and then I suddenly needed it, and I wish I had, had I wish I had it. And that is safety tools. So safety tools, if you're not familiar with the idea of safety tools in RPGs, there's a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, and the idea behind safety tools is that they are essentially ways for the player or the dungeon master to sort of, to clarify what kind of content they are interested in and uh, to clarify what kind of content they specifically want to avoid, as well as uh, have a tool in place to be able to pause the situation in a game if it's going in a place that people are uncomfortable with. And there's lots of, so there's, there, there's a whole bunch of different kinds. Uh, let's see what we can find. This looks good. There we go. Okay. So uh, a lot of this, this one I thought has a, has a pretty good, uh, a pretty good summary of the main ones that people are looking at. And I'm going to talk about a few of them today that uh, I think work out. But uh, so I want to spend a, a, just a short bit of t about time on why. And, you know, this is a relatively new, new concept in the world of RPGs. Like it really has come up probably in the last two or three years, maybe a little longer, maybe as far back as sort of four or five years. And part of it is the audience for RPGs has expanded greatly. And we're all coming from different, different parts of life. We all have different ages. We all have different things that, that have happened in our past. We all come from different backgrounds and things like that. And the more you get people together that have all these different backgrounds, there are topics that are sensitive for people. You know, when you think like, oh, you know, this, we don't need this. It's like there's lots of people who have suffered a lot of trauma and you don't want to bring up that trauma in game. I have plenty of patience for people who are like safety tools. What's that? And, you know, let's all learn about them. I have almost zero patience for people who are like, you know, I don't need them. So therefore they're dumb and no one should have them it's certainly your prerogative to say you don't need them. Uh, but I'll tell you, there's probably a lot of DMs who say, I don't need them. And then like, wow, I sure wish I had them, right? Uh, because you, you don't need it till you do. And you don't know why you're going to need it or where or with whom. Anybody can have these can have these situations come up and everybody ha wants opportunities. I have been in situations where I wish these safety tools had been in place because I was not comfortable with the direction that a game went, but I just suffered through and I enjoyed the game a lot less. It isn't necessarily also putting people into, you know, you're not going to send somebody into a seizure, right? But you're going to make the game worse, right? For people, the game could suck for people and they'll grit their teeth. And they'll look down at the table and they'll get through what they're getting through. And then they'll walk away and be like, that game sucked, right? Or I, this, they, they hated it. And in some cases, they could be very upset about things that it brings up, memories that it brings up. And you don't know what it's going to be. So the, the, the use of safety tools are there to kind of help players guide the general direction of the game away from areas that they're not comfortable with. So there's a whole bunch of different ones. And I'll, 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 we'll, we'll talk about these three. Well, we'll talk about three of these four because I don't know about the doors open. Uh, but I'll certainly talk about these three because I think they matter. So the X card is probably the most popular safety tool. The idea here is you have a, a, a three by five card, you draw an X on it. It's the simplest thing in the world. Everybody's got one in front of them. It's sitting off to the side and next to their character sheet. And you play the game. And if at any point the game is going in a direction that you are not comfortable with, you can you can tap the X card. And it's a non-vocal, non-confrontational way to say, can we move to something else? And so if a player taps the X card, a DM can, can see or GM can see that they tap the X card and say, ah, I'm going to fade and we're going to move the scene forward to something else, right? Uh, it's nice because it's fast. It's very simple. It's, you know, like it doesn't require anything special. It's a three by five card with an X. And I'm going to go, I'm going to skip down to lines and veils. Uh, lines and veils. And I think if we go to... This is where things have kind of hit the mainstream, right? If we go to D&D Beyond and we go to Tasha's in chapter four, session zero, they talk about, so they have talk about party creation. They talk about party formation, party origin, running a game for one player, uh, the social contract, right? And they describe this, um, you know, fun and fair and that everybody wants to have a good time. They respect each other and listen, uh, you know, violation. That's just your basic one. And then they talk about hard and soft limits, right? Once you have the players acknowledge the term, Many ways to mediate the discussion. You may want to do some research to find an approach that works for you and your group. And then they talk about soft limits, things where you want to have it in the background. It's, you know, and then hard limits, things that should not be crossed, right? And every member of the group has hard and soft limits. And it behooves the group to know what the... So they talk about hard and soft limits. And that's what lines and veils are. Lines and veils are a discussion of what are your hard limits? What are things you do not want? We do not want sexual assault in our games. We do not want... Uh, you know, character driven torture in our games. We don't want, you know, there are certain things we can say we do not want in our game and no one wants them, right? Uh, graphic sexual uh, uh, content, right? We, is, is a hard limit. 
And so people can describe what are the hard limits and, and, and set those to one side. And then you have soft limits, which are things like, it's okay, but I don't want it in the foreground, I want it in the background. And you might say like slavery, right? Or, uh, you know, so torture in general might be something best kept in the back. Human sacrifice, best kept in the back. I don't need to see somebody eviscerated, but I can come into a room and notice that like, you know, you can tell that a human sacrifice has occurred here. We don't need the gory details. So you might, you might have, you might say sexual contact uh, you know, uh, sexual, sexual description is a soft limit. I, is it fine that people are having sex? Sure. Just in the background, right? We're all, the camera pans to the lamp, right? Uh, or to the, to the, to the nightstand. It doesn't need to be graphically described. Uh, so everybody sort of has their different directions on what their hard and soft limits are. Those are lines and veils. And, and so you think between X card and lines and veils they are actually hitting different things. Lines and veils is a session zero technique to help everybody at the table understand what everybody's hard and soft limits are. And then the X card is there as a, during the game, you can do something about it. So then the other one that I thought is really interesting, which I hadn't heard of until I think like a day or two ago is script change. And the script change tool, oh yeah. So uh, let me let me go back to lines and veils because uh, Kadia134 has a really good point, which is the movie rating system works well. Yes, so as part of lines and veils, you can describe your general movie rating idea, which is this game is gonna be PG-13, think along the lines of the Indiana Jones movies, right? That's what I said for uh, Eberron, right? Was think along the lines of your of, of Indiana Jones movies. Or you can say, this is probably going to be like my Rhyme of the Frostman game. This could be like an R-rated movie. Uh, think along the lines of the thing, right? And you go, ooh, okay. And some people might go, that the thing is too much for me, right? And you say, okay, if that's cool, I can dial it back to PG-13 and the stuff that we would have in that, you know, the exploding animals and the you know, the gory things and the head spider, upside down head spider man, those will put in the background, right? We'll veil those things and then it's not so bad. A challenge with the rating and a challenge with lines and veils is that they are relatively gross in their resolution. They are like the rating system. It's like, oh, it's PG-13. That really, that tells you some stuff, but it doesn't tell you everything, right? And it, it doesn't, it doesn't, get into the specifics of like spiders or rats, right? Like what if somebody has a phobia of rats? Well, PG-13 has rats and spiders all over the place, but somebody might say that's really a hard line for me because I freak out when I see spiders, you know? And trust me, like this isn't again, like, oh, super soft, sensitive people. It's like, I know an, I know an artist who write, who draws really, really scary and graphic stuff. And, and you know, he's a tremendous artist and he hates spiders. And spiders are a hard limit for him, right? And it's like he could draw like all the other stuff. Crazy, weird, sacrificial stuff is fine for art. But over here, no. Everybody's got these things. This is not some super sensitive group that's just waiting to drop into your game and cause problems. Everybody's got this. People that you've played with for 20 years have their lines and veils. They have things that are good. And maybe they've never said them before. Maybe they've never come up before. And maybe their circumstances change. Maybe their own view of the world changes. And they've seen things recently that they don't want to recreate. And it really bothers them. And it breaks them out of the game. And it makes them have a bad time. So script change is an interesting one. I'm actually, I, I kind of dig script change. And the idea here is that it's vocal instead of a, like a, it's more like a X card style. It's done during the game. And the idea is that you can say things like pause, fast forward, or rewind. I actually think the most valuable one is pause. That's the one that I grabbed onto. I don't, I don't need a robust system. Like on the rewind, rewind and fast forward are, are secondary to pause. Pause is the, hey, the game is going somewhere. I might not be comfortable with it. I want to say, hey, pause for a second. I'm not okay beating up a goblin for information, right? I, I don't, I don't, I'm not comfortable with that. And that should be a cue to everybody. Whoop, we're out of character. Player's not happy. Let's in the in the game and let's say we're how do we want to handle this? Let, like let's just do this without violence. Let's just intimidate him, right? And if the intimidation doesn't work, it doesn't work. But we're not gonna murder him and we're not gonna torture him, right? We're not gonna beat him up. And so and then you go, okay, let's go back in game, right? So that idea, I think the pause part of the script change is the most powerful piece of it. And a really good one to hang on to. Doors open policy is like, look, the DM is there to make sure that the players are having a good time. All the players, are, according to the social contract, are there to ensure that everyone is having a good time. Nobody thinks anyone else's feelings are less important than their own. And we're all going to have an open game. I think it's a good, it's a good contract to have. Hopefully you've got this, right? Hopefully you've, you've kind of brought the people into your game that are this way. If they're not, you probably need to kick them out, right? Like anybody who feels like they're you know, like, I don't care how they feel. I'm tired of dealing with their feelings on this. I just want to play an RPG. Okay, maybe this game isn't for you, 
right? And and you, you may, there are probably other games that'll be more than happy to have you. This ain't one of them. I think that needs to happen. I've been very lucky that in all the groups I've had, everybody's been supportive of everybody's feelings on this stuff. And I can't imagine anybody in any of my groups who would say, you know, sorry, my enjoyment of the game is more important than the, than the negative feelings that they're having. So these are four really valuable really valuable tools. And so my, my thought on this is like, how can we sort of develop a layered stack of these safety tools where bringing them in isn't weird and everybody can kind of like, sure, that makes sense, right? And I think having a stack of these safety tools in place can work. And well, so I keep bringing it up. So why do I suddenly care? I suddenly care because it mattered in my Rhyme of the Frostmaiden game. I ran a, my, my first session of Rhyme of the Frostmaiden last, last, last week. And I have six players. We're all online. Two of the players are new, brand new campaign, brand new characters. And everybody's really excited to play. And the first two thirds of it went fine. We had a nice big battle. Everything was cool. And then they had a situation that came up and one of the players was not comfortable with it. And they did say something in the text chat and we missed it because we were all paying attention to like Albert Rodeo and we were all like looking at other things and everybody, six people, everybody's got an idea and it's moving fast. And you know, we're not in video. The person that was having the problem was not on video. So no one could even tell. And you know, and then suddenly I realized like, oh my God, this is going on. And I said something like, should, should we X card this? And the answer was yes. And I said, okay, I got to pull out of this. And I was able to kind of pull out before anything really bad happened, but not before the player was upset about it, right? And I wish looking back, there were like three opportunities, including one, like an hour and a half earlier to address this topic that I knew could be sensitive, but I didn't handle it at the time. And I wish I had, obviously, because it would have been a big difference in the game. And I didn't, the, the tools weren't in place. I had not set the tools in place for me to handle the situation or for me to A, recognize the situation, give the player the tool to be able to take the agency from the circumstance and break the discussion of five other people and say, I'm not cool with what's going on here and, and be able to address that. So it, to me, it was a failing of, on my part of lines and veils, not, not clarifying what the lines and veils were. And it was a failing of my part of not instituting the lines and veils at a spe specific circumstance earlier, and then not having a good enough tool in place for the player to be able to say, hey, pause for a second, I'm not comfortable with what we're doing. So that got me very interested in this. And it means that in the beginning of my next session, I'm going to say, hey, we've got six, players in this group, we're playing online, we're playing brand new characters, we're playing in a brand new campaign, two of the players are new. And so it's easy for us to have miscommunication and not understand how other people are feeling about something and for things to move really, we're all very excited and things are moving fast. However, we want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to kind of jump in if they're not comfortable with the way a, a situation is going. So therefore, uh, one, we're going to add a phrase that anybody can bring up at any time. And this phrase is a way for all of us to stop, pause, pull back out of character and look at a situation and make sure everybody's comfortable with it. And that phrase will be pause for a second, right? Pause for a second is a phrase. So the idea of like, if it's vocal and you say, pause for a second, I'm not comfortable with us punching this goblin in the face for information. All right. I don't, I don't want to go any further than punching him in the face. I don't want to get into torture with this goblin in order to get information, right? And they say, okay, cool. We'll just stick to intimidation. Boom, back in character. So the phrase, pause for a second, is something that I'm taking straight from script change, right? And, and the idea of like, when somebody says, pause for a second, everybody else should stop whatever is going on. And, and I, the DM, will, will go in and we'll say what's, what's up and we'll find out what the situation. They don't have to explain why they're uncomfortable with it. They don't have to say like, you know, they don't have to get in any part of their background that makes them about why something makes them uncomfortable. They all they have to do is describe what is uncomfortable or what is going on that they don't like out of character. And then we figure it out as a group and then we go back in and we're fine. And I think that so I, I think that the stack is have a general rating for the game. Hey, I'm running Rhyme of the Frost Maiden thematically. It's going to be similar to like John Carpenter's The Thing and it's probably going to be R rated. Uh, mostly, and then, and then when I say R rated, here's why. And it's not because of kooky sex stuff. It's because there's, you know, body horror, uh, there's, there's, you know, and boy, the, the list of potential themes of potentially problematic themes for Rhyme of the Frost Maiden is large. There's a large, there's a lot of themes in there that are questionable. So that, that, that's certainly a, um, so, so then that's the start the rating is this, here are the things that are in here now. Of these things, which ones are hard limits? You do not want them in there. Which ones are okay, but you really want them off screen? And do you have any other things that generally come up and that might come up in a D&D game that are hard or soft limits for you? What are your hard or soft limits, right? And boy, write them down. 
right? Write them down and then and then push them back out to the players so everybody is aware of like, these are the hard limits and these are the soft limits. That's another failing that I did, right? And maybe I need to step back and say, let's let's do this part of it again, right? So that we're all clear on what's allowed and what's not. Because I, I think like I glossed over this when I did it for my session zero and then it came up, right? It came up in the first session. So, you know, and it came up with a player I've been playing with for decades, Right. So it's not it's not like, oh, you know, there's only something you have to do with people you don't know. This is somebody I know very, very well. So, you know, that that that's why it's important. So I think rating for the thing is good. Listing the things that can come up in the campaign. Then other things that players generally bring up. What are the things that that they might be concerned about? Uh, and that hits your lines and veils. Then write them down, push them back out so that everybody's clear. And here's where we stand with lines and veils. And recognizing that that's not all inclusive. Like we can always add stuff to that. We can all, you know, anybody at any time can bring up stuff that they think might come up and add it to it. It doesn't have to be all inclusive. Like it's the things we're generally talking about in a D&D game. And then the next layer. So those are your, your you know, kind of three-ish layers, right? Rating content that you expect might be in the game, other stuff that players bring to the game. And then the final one is is the, the pause, right? And the pause is if anybody at any time is uncomfortable with where something is going, and it doesn't even have to be a big one. It doesn't have to be like childhood drama stuff. It could just be, I just don't like where we're headed with this, right? Like, I think we're missing the point with working with this evil person. They should be able to say, pause for a second. Do we really want to ally with a vampire here? Right? Is that is that really what we out of let's stop let's talk about this out of character for a minute. Let's break away from our how our characters feel about it. Is this I I don't like that we're allying with a vampire, right? And and it's important that certain decisions in D D need to be a hundred percent need everybody needs to be on board. There are a lot of decisions where it's like it's okay. So like if you say, Hey, you got three quests, pick one of the quests and three players say, oh, we like this quest and two players say, we like that quest or, or they're split up or whatever. If you say like, are you guys okay if we're going to go with this one? Three people voted for this one. Are you good? And I'm like, yeah, sure. That's fine. We'll go with it. Right. They, there are times where you don't need hundred percent consensus, but then there are other times where you do need, like, are we going to kill the villain? We captured the villain. We're worried they might get away. Are we going to murder him? Right. Are we going to kill the villain so that the villain can't come back? Everybody should be cool with that before you do it. Right. And, and maybe, maybe in character it's handled, right? Like I think we should kill him. And the other character is like, okay, I'm in, or Paladin says, I'm going to go for a walk. Right. And, and you can handle it in character. But if somebody says like, I don't, I don't like how this is sitting. They can say, pause for a second out of game. Do we really feel like we want to murder this guy? I I'm not comfortable with the fact that we're murdering this guy. I think it's steering our group in a direction I'm not comfortable with. And they go, okay, you know, maybe we'll bring him to the authorities, right? And you have the discussion out of character. So I think to me, the quote unquote, pause for a second key key phrase is a good way to uh, do what the X card is doing. It has some flexibility in it that isn't quite as confrontational as a full X card. So I think that that can work out. I think it's very important that as a DM, if you put this tool in place, you need to see it when it happens. You need to be willing to use it and maybe you're the one who says it, like pause for a second. Are you guys all really cool with doing this? Especially if you feel like one of your players might not be comfortable with it, right? And they're not gonna say it. Maybe they're just the quiet one, right? And, and you might say, pause for a second. Are, are we, you know, as soon as you see it, say pause for a second. You know, we're, so it's, it's good for a DM to use it. And it's good for uh, a player. It's good for players to use it. It's good, the DM should also be, should shut down any other conversation that happens. Once somebody says that, if they haven't described what the situation is yet, if they haven't had the opportunity to step in, it is really important for the DM to step in and say, hang on everybody, break character for a second. Joe over here want, want, you know, wants to break character for a second. What is it? You know, and it's really important to, to break that facilitate, you know, break, break the current situation, break out. And that was something like, I didn't have that tool. It, it, it didn't happen, right? Like, like, the situation after the player was already uncomfortable with the situation, and even after I realized it and started to do something, other players were still piling on, and the piling on was what actually made it worse, right? It was the, the, the you know the person felt ganged up on because they felt like everybody else was on board with this thing, and they're all running with it, and they're all running fast, and they're like, "Hang on, I never was cool with this," right? And they never it, it was it was a problem that they didn't have. Yeah, so I think the pause for a second uh, tool is a good one. I plan on bringing it in both my games. It's an, I think it's really important. I think it's an important tool. It's something I had not paid en enough attention to. And uh, I wish I had, right? I wish I'd put better tools in place because, you know, I think people would have had a better time in my games if I had. You don't, you just don't know. You don't know what's going to hit people. You don't know what's going to bother them. And even if you know them really well, you know, we're one of the wonderful things about RPGs is that 
the, the, it is infinite in its scope. We can go anywhere and we can do anything, right? We can go to, we can go a billion years in the future of earth, or we can go to entire other solar systems. We can go to other planes of existence where, you know, we can go to worlds that are completely flat and have where the sky, where the, when the clouds are the layers, right? We can go anywhere we want. It's fantastic. Likewise, as we're going to all of all these different situations, we can be all kinds of different things, right? In these situations, it's impossible for us to know what combination of events are going to make people uncomfortable with it. We just don't know, right? We can we can generally guess. Like there, I bet you there's a lot of hard lines that we can all agree to. I bet you there's some soft lines that most of us can agree to. But then there's some things you don't realize. Like, oh man, I had no idea. My friend, you know, my friend uh, uh, Scott did not like rats, and I've been throwing rats, and I wrote a whole adventure about rats, and like he's been creeped out every time, and he never said anything. How hard is it for him? Like, hey, pause for a second. I really don't like rats. Like I really, they, they, they freak me out and I don't like rats. Oh, okay. No rats. Right. So in conclusion to this topic, uh, I, the, the stack of safety tools I plan on bringing into my game, which are based on a lot of articles and a lot of tools that I've, that I've read, uh, a lot of things that I've investigated are overall rating for the adventure. You know, this is in Rhyme of the Frost Maiden is an R rated is probably gonna be an R rated adventure similar in scope and in theme to John Carpenter's The Thing. If if we're cool with that, I can dial it back to PG thirteen if com- if the players are are comfortable with that. So, rating uh, a list of campaign themes that may be troubling that could come up: extreme cold, darkness, isolation, betrayal, secrets. You know, inner party secrets. Uh, sacrifices, you know, uh, uh, humanoid sacrifices. Boy, the list for <laughs> the list for Rhyme of Frostbane is really long, right? So bring up that list and then talk to the players about, are we comfortable with this? Keeping good notes the whole time. Uh, then bring it up to the players. What are some of the themes that can could occur in this game, do you think, that you have hard limits on? What are things you really don't want to have happen at all? What are things that are okay to have happen as long as they're in the background? Right, so that that two two other like mind control, parasite, yeah, like like parasites. I tell you, the list is it's a long list for for Frostmaiden, which is why I think now is probably the best time to talk about this stuff. Rating campaign themes that could come up and and getting feedback from the players about what their hard and soft limits are on those. Then other hard and soft limits they might have, other the other lines and veils. What are hard lines you don't want to cross? What are things that are okay as long as they're veiled? As long as they're you know, handle off screen, they're handled in background, they're not, we don't focus on it, right? So now you got that good stack and document it and then spend time as a GM putting it together in a good list and then sending it back out to the player. So everybody is aware, these are really our hard limits on the game. These are the soft limits. So everybody's aware of what we've got. I need to do that. And then finally, the pause button. Everybody's got it. And the pause button is at any time during the game, if you're not comfortable with where things are going, uh, you're not comfortable with the direction things are headed. You're not comfortable with whatever's happening currently. You can say, pause for a second and we'll break character and we'll see what's going on and we'll figure it out. And an example is pause for a second. I'm not comfortable with us torturing a goblin for information, right? Pause for a second. I'm, I'm, you know, what, what's another example? Uh, pause for a second. I'm getting freaked out by all the rats in this place. You know, pause for a second. Stop talking about poking people in the eyes. So those, those, I think that's a good stack, right? It's free. It requires no tools at all. It's just conversation. Like these are my favorite things about D&D. I love when we're able to sort of take a set of tools, right? We call them tools, but I call everything a tool, right? And we take this set of tools and we're able to give it out and our games are going to be better for it. And we didn't have to go to a store and buy anything, right? We didn't have to make make something. It costs zero. And we're closer with our friends and family, right? We're, 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 we're helping people. So yeah, I get really excited by this stuff. Uh, so I hope that conversation was useful. I hope you're able to take it where, where you can take it. And uh, I want to thank you very much for your time.